Collision and raycast, you know, the primary techniques with which a programmer interacts with the physical world of a game. These techniques form the basis of most gameplay mechanics. Ballistics and artificial intelligence rely heavily on raycasting, while triggered sequences and other features require a robust collision system. This tutorial will establish a foundation upon which further lessons will demonstrate advanced gameplay mechanics. Now in Ludworks Engine we can retrieve information about all the collisions that occurred during the last physics update. And physics are updated when the update world command is called. After that we can find the uh, number of collisions that occurred with the count collisions command. And then we can use get collision entity to retrieve uh, both of the entities that occur that collided during this collision and you can also retrieve the collision position and the normal of the collision this program is copied straight from the article and when we run it We see these bodies dropping and all the collision data is being printed on screen. Now here I specified that uh, collisions should occur between entity type 1 and itself and the response is 1, but if I change the response to 2, uh, what this does is it will enable no response collision. So there'll be no physical collision but the collision data will still be recorded so the bodies are passing right through the ground but the collision data is still being recorded and printed on screen you can use this for a uh, an invisible trigger zone the player might walk into and then set off some series of events. Now let's talk about raycasting. Raycasts are line intersection tests the programmer can perform at any time. Raycasts only work on meshes and terrain. They do not work on physics bodies. There are two main types of raycasts and these are visibility tests and picks. Visibility tests simply return 1 or 0 depending on the result of the test. These are faster than picks because they will abort the raycasting routine as soon as one hit is detected. There are two visibility test functions. The point visible function tests visibility between two points in global space. This program is copied straight from the article and here's the point visible command and it's testing between these two points and then the entity visible command will actually test for visibility between two entities and internally it's actually just calling point visible using the entity global positions as the points to test. Let's look at the parameters for the point visible command. We have obviously the, the two points to test and then we also have a radius value a collision type value and a pick filter parameter and these three are all optional parameters you don't need to use. The radius value can be specified to use a thick ray. The default value is zero resulting in a one-dimensional ray. A collision type can be specified and the ray will only intersect with objects that have a defined collision response with this type. It may be confusing that collision responses can be used with raycast because until now we've maintained that collision and raycasting were entirely different techniques. However, the collision response behavior is very convenient to use even if it does mix our paradigms, paradigms up a little bit. And finally, the filter callback provides one additional method with which raycast can be controlled. For every object tested, the filter callback will be called. If the filter callback returns 1, the entity will be tested. If the filter callback returns 0, the entity will be skipped. And we'll, uh, I'll demonstrate all of these techniques in this lesson. 
So again, here we're using the point visible command, and this is just going to return either one or zero, depending on the results of the test. And so I'll show you this program. So up here in the left corner, it displays the visibility value, and right now it says zero. A raycast is being performed from this point over on the right to the point over on the left, and I'm just drawing a red line on screen so that you can see what the actual ray is. Now if I use the up and down keys to move this cube, now it says that the point is visible. So when you can see when the line intersects the cube, the result is zero, meaning it's not visible and when I move the cube out of the way the result is 1 meaning that the point from here on the right to the point on the left is visible. The next program in the article will perform a pick test. Unlike the visibility test, the pick function provides us with the closest intersection point. And down here I'm using the line pick command and the parameters are just about the same as the point visible command except line pick will accept a pick object and if anything is picked then the result is one this function will, will return one and it will fill in the appropriate values into the pick object and the pick object includes information about the entity that was hit and the position that the uh, collision occurred at and the normal of the uh, where the hit occurs. So this will tell us where the position where the raycast hit and the normal it hit at and what entity it hit and it will always return the closest hit or the first hit. So you can see now I'm drawing this line from the origin of the raycast to the point where it gets hit, where it hits the cube. And if I move the cube out of the way, then I just draw a line from between the two points of the raycast. And you can see on the upper left the position where the raycast hit occurs is displayed. So the picking commands give us more information than the visibility tests, but they're also slower, and you don't always need to use them. Now we're going to learn how to make it so our raycasts only hit certain objects. There's three ways we can do this. So here we have two spheres and a cube, and when I move the cube out of the way, it still says up here on the left that uh, the point is not visible because it's hitting the spheres. So let's say that I want to perform a raycast that hits the cube, but won't hit the spheres. The simplest way we can do this is just to hide the sphere entities. And I'll just hide them right before the point visible test is run. And then after that I'll show them again so that they're visible when we render them. And you can see now the visibility test returns one when I move the cube out of the way.